Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to be looking at the transfer of energy and ancient weapons technology as I explore catapults. Let's check it out. Catapults were being used by the Greeks and Romans over 2,000 years ago. They were excellent for medieval knights trying to knock down castle walls and they were also great for pirates during the golden age of piracy in the 17th century. But what is actually going on in a catapult that allows it to fire and cover such a great distance? Well, that is what I'm going to explore today by making a simple catapult. Catapults use two types of energy. One of these is kinetic energy, which is movement energy, and the other one is called elastic potential energy. This is a stored type of energy. Think about when you stretch back an elastic band before you let it go, right now it has the potential energy to fly off your fingers once you do release it. That is elastic potential energy. To make a simple catapult, all I'm going to be using is some popsicle sticks, elastic bands, a plastic lid, some glue, and I'm going to be using balls of paper for firing. Cotton balls are also quite good for firing, but if you're doing this at home, be careful if you're using anything harder for firing in your catapult, because we always need to make sure we're being safe, we don't want to hurt anybody and we don't want to break anything. The first thing I'm going to do is take six popsicle sticks stacked one on top of the other and use elastic bands to wrap these tightly together at each end. Then I'm going to place a single popsicle stick on top and use two elastic bands to attach this on in a crisscross pattern. If you only use one elastic band in a diagonal, the lollipop stick will get pulled to one side, but by using the crisscross you'll be able to hold that lollipop stick in the centre. Then I'm going to put another single lollipop stick at the bottom of the stack and at one end I'm going to use an elastic band to attach my top and bottom popsicle sticks together. On the top popsicle stick at the end which is highest up I'm going to glue a plastic lid and this is where I'm going to be putting my launch material for firing. Before you can test your popsicle stick you need to leave it until your glue is set. I'm also going to set up a catapult using giant lollipop sticks. And this is just to see if there's any difference made in the catapult between using the small lollipop sticks and using the giant lollipop sticks. Now that the glue has set, it's time to test my catapults. I'm going to test the one made with normal lollipop sticks first. I'm going to take a small sheet of paper and scrunch it down into a ball and put it in the lid on the launching stick. I'm then going to pull down onto the top of the lid and let go and watch what happens. Well, that catapult definitely launches, so now it's time to test the one made with the giant lollipop sticks and see if there is any difference. I'm just going to use the same ball of paper that I used to test the first one. And that one's launching as well. So what is happening in this activity to allow the catapults to launch? Well, when I'm pulling back on the launching stick, I'm bending it and putting in elastic potential energy. This is stored energy just waiting to be released. If you're doing this yourself, you'll be able to feel that energy already pushing up against your finger and that is why you're having to put force in to hold it down. 
When I take my finger off that launching stick, this elastic potential energy is turned into kinetic, which is movement energy. This means that the popsicle stick is moving upwards and this movement energy transfers into the ball of paper and that is what is launching it out of the lid. With the small popsicle sticks, I had to put more energy into pushing it down than I did with the big popsicle sticks as they've got a bit more flex in them. This means though that there is a bit more potential energy stored in the small lollipop sticks and that's why that bit of paper was flying higher and further than on the catapult made with the big lollipop sticks. If you would like to know more about the different types of energy and energy transfer, check out my videos on the conservation of energy and 10 things you should know about physics. I'll put links in the description to these two videos. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demos I've done so far here to my STEM career interviews and here to my Things You Should Know videos. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring catapults.